The President, please be seated. The trial chamber is back in session. And next, the floor is given to the defense team for Mr. Noon Chiers so that uh, they can present the document uh, before the trial chamber. The President, Council, uh, hold on. The President, International Defense Council from Sanunchi. The ch Chamber would like to inform you that the request uh, to submit document E 119.1.3 uh, uh, we are not yet decided to make a decision on uh, summoning the witness uh, to testify. So regarding this uh, expert witness, um, the trial chamber will consider and make decision um, in due course. And document E slash nine books by Philip Short. The trial chamber plan to uh, summon him to testify next year. And this document, um, the trial chamber it's not allow not allow you to uh, present this document at this time. So we should wait until uh, the completion of this uh, witness, and then uh, we can uh, move on. Thank you, Mr. President. I have been trying, um, upon very good advice, to be as amable as possible. However, this is the very first time I've ever heard this. Such conditions were never placed on these documents. We were told we could present any document we felt was relevant to this stage of the proceedings. So to be told now at 11 a.m., two minutes before I'm about to begin my presentation, which I might add was centered on those very two documents you just mentioned, I find that remarkable remarkable to say the least and I'll leave it at that what wh where are you coming from mr. president why weren't these indications given to the parties ages ago this is exactly what I meant the president uh, um, the trial chamber advised you earlier and also mentioned the ground that you withhold the two documents for the moment. The reason is that uh, we, uh, we will not repeat the ground and the opportunity to present documents. Um, the trial chamber will give you another opportunity, especially on the schedule, uh, to hear the witness um, who will come to testify on uh, the document in case of Mr. Philip Short. And Mr. Stephen Heather has not been yet decided on summoning him to come to testify. However, the trial chamber will give opportunity to the party to present the documents in relation to their books or their essays or their uh, document in 
an appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. President. I obviously have a few questions about that. First of all, I would just like to state, for the record, I would like to make my record. There were three documents that I intended to discuss today. E, I repeat that, E190.1.398, E, and again I repeat that, E3-1568, stroke and E3-9. stroke So those documents all have E numbers. They've all been on this trial chamber's case file for a long time, for a long time. And the indications that you made today are being made, as I've said, for the very first time today at 11 a.m., the second, excuse me, the third day of the document hearing. I find this practice strange. I find it to our detriment. We have spent a considerable amount of time preparing for the hearing based on your... I, the President, I now hand over to Judge uh, Zhang McLevenge to clarify this. Counsel Iannuzzi, the trial chamber does not wish to counter uh, your rights to admit documents that you deem relevant. We are simply saying that this is not the juncture at which you are uh, permitted to do so. The judges are responsible for the conduct of these proceedings. We have decided that when the expert shall provide testimony, a decision will have been issued with respect to the appearance of Mr. Stephen Hedder. I believe that it is inopportune on your part to make such comments. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Laverne. So if we could just continue this conversation for a moment, just so I have it clearly in my mind, what you're telling me is that the Philip Short document cannot be discussed now. It can be discussed if and when Philip Short appears before the chamber. Do I have that correct? Okay. Thank you. The next document is a document in... Oh, sorry. My second document, my second document is an interview conducted by Ben Kiernan with Chia Sim and Hang Sam Rin. Am I to understand that that document cannot be discussed unless and until Ben Kiernan appears for testimony? Or may I, may I go ahead with that document, E3-1568? Judge Cartwright, I'm just trying to get some clarification. I really, honestly... That's all. Oui, Maître Yanuzzi. Counsel Yanuzzi, the trial chamber has referred to two documents. The first is the publication written by Mr. Philip Short. Mr. Philip Short is amongst the experts who is supposed to be heard shortly, uh, presumably at the start of next year. Therefore, you will have the opportunity to present these documents during the uh, summoning or the appearance of Mr. Philip Short. The second document that we are concerned with is a Stephen Header publication. He is also on the witness list, and no decision has been taken. Those are the only two sole documents that we have referred to. And there's no objection for you to present those documents during the future hearings. You may only present documents that are relevant to the current proceedings. Thank you again, Judge Laverne. I, I think we're, we're almost there. I have one more question, and this relates to the header document. Am I to understand what you've just said to mean that if Mr. Header does not appear as a witness before this chamber, then there will be no discussion of his document. I see heads are, are, in, are nodding uh, in agreement I, or shaken in the opposite position. Yes. Is that correct? I can only, we, the Nunchia defense team, can only make use of this particular article 
if Stephen Hedder appears before the chamber? No. 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 Okay. Then, then obviously I need further clarification. Thank you. Very well. With respect to documents written by Mr. Stephen Hedder, you know, either Stephen Hedder is summoned before this chamber, then the documents can be entertained. And if the chamber does not hear that expert, then there will be another opportunity to uh, contemplate whether or not those documents will uh, be admitted. I hope that things are crystal clear, Council. Indeed, they are now crystal clear. Thank you. Uh, well, then, my presentation, as it were, will be very brief. I have one document to present to the Chamber today. And before I begin, I would like to make some general comments, some general comments to frame the issue, to sort of set the stage, as I believe uh, Mr. Rayner said the other day. So before I begin, I would just like to reiterate our position, reiterate our position, now a well-established one, I would say, regarding the scope of these proceedings. And we do accept, uh, as we must, we do accept that much of the proceedings in case two, as it's currently constituted, relate to matters not directly relevant to the factual allegations with respect to the first two movements of the population and the recently added crime site of Tool Ho Tre. And we further understand, we further understand that the rationale for this is to lay uh, a foundation, as it were, for future truncated trials in case two, within case two. At least that's the theory. And I just wanted to say on that point, we register our full agreement with what Mr. Cayley said uh, on that issue the last time he was in court, that that will never, ever happen. Uh, but I will not belabor that point uh, today. Again, uh, as to the alleged CPK administrative and related structures, we should focus then, we really should focus on the time periods that are relevant to the underlying factual allegations. So, of course, CPK administrative structures are relevant. Obviously, that's true. But those structures are relevant within the period, and possibly shortly before and shortly after, the period, the factual period, that you yourselves have set as the basis of this trial. And I'm referring, obviously, to the first two population movements and the newly added, the newly added crime base um, at Tuol Po Tre. So I'd just like to say that. I was going to make some comments about, some introductory comments about the length of the documents I was going to submit. Uh, obviously, that's, that's not necessary now. Uh, I'm, I'm not permitted to, 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 to deal with those documents today. I understand I, I may be able to do that at a later stage. So I will just say that with respect to the single document that I will be presenting, I urge your honors to read the entire document, obviously, not just the portions that I'm quoting from, uh, and that, of course, is for the sake of completeness. So I will turn now to this document. And again, for the record, this is E3 stroke 1568, and that is a written record of a series of interviews conducted by Ben Kiernan with two individuals, Chia Sim and Hang Sem Rin. There are two brief portions of that document that I would like to read out, and I will begin, and I will do this very, very slowly because I did not provide copies of these documents in advance, or excuse me, I didn't pinpoint in advance for the sake of the translators, so I will go very slowly. I'm now referring to ERN English 00651878, and that's through uh, zero zero six five one eight seven uh, eight zero excuse me eight zero the Khmer the corresponding Khmer ERNs for that portion zero zero seven one three nine four five through four eight and the corresponding French zero zero seven four three three four nine through five one and so just let me begin again at English 
0065-1878. I'm at the bottom of the page. And this is a portion of the interview with Mr. Hank Semrin. At that time, at that time, <coughs> excuse me, at that time I was still with Sun Sen. And Sun Sen had meetings, divided us into groups. I took part in activities with Sun Sen. Then, after three months in Phnom Penh here, following liberation, I was sent back to the East. Then after I got back to the East, Division One, Division One was totally destroyed. And this is in parentheses. I'm not sure what that means, what the author intended that to mean. Uh, in parentheses, its personnel arrested. If I was still in that division, I don't know what would have become of me. And it was this first division that Pol Pot praised highly, highly in the fighting. That is the division that Hank Semrin was part of. Uh, there was only this division that fought hard, fought hard, excuse me, and drove deeply, unclear in brackets, in the highway, one region, and along the Mekong River, again unclear in brackets, right to the border and was very active. The liberation of Niek Lung involved this division and my, my referring to Hang Samrin, 126th Regiment fought to liberate Niek Lung from east and west and on the water to liberate it on the 1st of April, 1975. It was me, Hang Samrin, who liberated Niek Lung from the east and the west. Then I was ordered, excuse me, to send my troops to go and fight into Phnom Penh. But fighting into Phnom Penh did not involve strong fighting. The unclear Khmer words in bracket, Lon Nol soldiers in parentheses, rallied to us and let the troops go through at that time. On 17 April at 9 a.m., I arrived at the Independence Monument. After liberation, there was a division of responsibility among three divisions from the east. There was my first division, my younger brother's second division, and Chiu, uh, C double H I E U, Chiu's third division, who fought up to Troy Changvar with the Marines. The second division fought its way up to opposite, in brackets, unclear Khmer words, and this first division along Highway 1 and the road from Takmao into Phnom Penh. There were the three thrusts from the east. Moving on, and I'm now on 00651880, and that's the same range I've already read out. Quoting again, then after staying three months, they had my division leave the division command to Char Ampu and the troops to Prek Eng. Skipping a bit, I'm still on that same page. In that three months, I, and I'm, this is still Hang Sim Rin, I did a lot of work. Immediately after liberation, there was a meeting in order to receive the plan distributed, again in brackets, unclear Khmer words, from the center. It was for the whole country, not just for one division. It included both military and civil, in parentheses, officials. At that time, all zones from throughout the country came to the meeting to receive the plan from the center. Pol Pot, comma, Pol Pot. It was on 20 May, which we have fixed as the Day of Hatred, the day the Pol Pot plan was fixed to distribute generally to implement the political plan inside and outside the country as the time Pol Pot announced it. So we took 20 May as the Day of Hatred as his, again in brackets, unclear. One more passage from this series of interviews, and then I'll be quite finished. Uh, this is English, it's the same document, E3 stroke 1568, English ERN 00651 Khmer ERN 00713955, French ERN 00743356. And again, for the record, this is that very same interview with Ben Kiernan and Mr. Hang Sam Rin. And 
at this stage, they're discussing a meeting, a meeting that apparently took place in Phnom Penh on the 20th of May in 1975. I'm quoting now, they didn't say kill, in parentheses, the Lon No leaders, period. They said, unclear Khmer words in brackets, don't allow them to remain in the framework. It doesn't mean smash. Nguyen Chia used this phrase, phrase, excuse me, Komtek, and that is an English transliteration of a Khmer word, I assume. Komtek means kill, but they used a general word. Komchat, again, I assume, a transliteration of a Khmer word into English. Nunchia talked of wiping out markets, not allowing money. If there were markets and money, there was property. The important heavy pressure was against property. If there was money, there were markets, and if there were markets, there would be people with money, and these people would have property. So they wanted to wipe out property, not allow private property to exist. So again, Perhaps just to emphasize, let me rephrase that. Comtech means kill, but they used a general word, Comchat. And I assume, I hope, everyone on the stage and perhaps people who have been following the trial will immediately be reminded of an exchange between my colleague, Mr. Powell, and expert witness David Chandler on this very point. So this is something that obviously has come up already. It's an important issue from our perspective. And it's the last thing that uh, I will quote, I believe. I have nothing more there. Um, just a few general comments then to wrap up. Just a few general comments. And I will refrain, I will absolutely refrain from characterizing the bits of evidence that I've just read. But I would like to say very briefly, and this goes to the limits of the OCIJ's investigation. Uh, I, I was not in a position today to draw from a trove of material which, um, as I'm listening to myself, I realize now this is going to make very little sense since I was not allowed to quote from the other two documents. The point I wanted to make, the point I intended to make with the two documents that I was not allowed to quote from was that there was a great deal, a great deal, according to two experts, incredible deal of autonomy at the mid and lower levels. The mid and lower, I see my friend is on his feet. I'm, I'm gonna stop talking now. The President, Prosecutor, you may proceed. Mr. President, we've taken a fairly relaxed approach to this document presentation generally. But when my learned friend is seeking to explain the relevance of points raised in documents that are not before the chamber. It's really simply just trying to get the content of those two documents before the chamber in circumstances where you've ruled that they're not relevant and admissible at this stage. So let's not have points coming through the back door, please. I will follow the lead of my friend from yesterday and take the point, as well noted, I'm certainly glad that he articulated at least what I was trying to do, what I had hoped to do during this document hearing, during this document hearing on CPK structures. However, I will have to do that at a later stage, as I understand it, at a later stage. So just coming to my last point, and this clearly relates to the discussion that, that we've been having, it's very important for us, it's very important for us for our outstanding witness requests, and as Judge Lavera noted, one of those includes the request to hear Mr. Stephen Hedder. Of course, it also, it also includes a request to hear Mr. Hank Samrin. Now, there's been a certain exchange uh, between the Chamber and, and our side about what's happening. It's quite unclear to us. We haven't received any reasons. It seems that a lot of our witnesses have been rejected. It certainly seems to us that many of our witnesses have been rejected. We haven't received any reasoned ruling on that issue, and I, I, I just assume that it's perhaps forthcoming. It's, it's been quite a long time now. Um, what I would like to note, and Mr. President, before you tell me to put it in writing, I would just like to, to emphasize that a written motion is indeed on its way a written motion from our team, and I'm simply highlighting this issue for the benefit of the public, many of whom, as I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know, 
do not read court filings or have access to the internet. Uh, so again, let me just say that there are many witnesses that we would like to hear in this, in this trial. And we've made the request and we've made it many times and we've made it in writing and we've given reason. The President, uh, you understand that the trial chamber gave you the opportunity to present uh, the documents uh, relevant to the facts on the structure of CPK. You use your right beyond the scope of the uh, proceeding decided by the trial chamber. The trial chamber uh, will not allow you to go ahead uh, with this kind of statement your request and other request uh, to the trial chamber. The trial chamber will consider and uh, rule on that in due course. Under the internal rules um, does not specify the time period for the trial chamber to make any ruling on this case. So the trial chamber will consider uh, the request um, in due course based on um, your request and other parties' requests. And those requests were decided and ruled upon uh, since 2011 until now. The trial chamber hopes that the defense team follow the schedule and the framework for each segment of the hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. As I said, we, we are working on that uh, written motion and we will file that in due course. I would just like to say for the record that I do not agree that you gave me the opportunity to discuss the communication structure and the administrative structure. I told you a week ago, I told your chamber a week ago that I intended to use those documents. And again, you didn't tell me until today that I wouldn't be allowed. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, and again, in terms of going off script, I know this chamber likes to follow a script. I know this chamber would prefer to have a trial by script, a show trial of sorts. But that's just not how things work. Issues come up. They Look. The President, it seems that you uh, conclude you don't have any other document to present before the chamber. So if you don't have any other document, the trial chamber uh, will not allow you to make any further statement on that. Thank you, Mr. President. I have just one more to say, uh, just to conclude. The President, your, uh, look, your presentation of document has been completed. So uh, you need to present uh, documents if you have. We have a client in this courtroom, as I'm sure you're aware. Mr. Nunchia is our client. And what I wanted to say, what I wanted to say, my last point, was that based on what's transpired, he will not be taking you up on your offer to comment on documents. So thank you very much. That's all I have to say, in fact. The President, the trial chamber reminds you that the right to make comment or uh, respond to the document presented by the parties, including um, the defense team for the two accused. Um, the accused uh, indicated that um, they remain, uh, they, they reserve the right to remain silent on the 10th of October 
2012. And the trial chamber always gives an opportunity to make comment by the accused on the documents presented before the chamber. And the accused can raise his hand uh, to make uh, an address to the court, but uh, in relation or in response to the documents presented by the parties only. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one new matter, one incredibly new matter. I was, I was just informed. I was just informed that the OCP on the 10th of October was permitted to make some use of a Steve Hedder document. I will check the transcripts uh, and confirm that, and I will get back to your chamber if that is in fact the case, and I'm just putting it as a possibility at the moment. I don't have my notes in front of me. If that is in fact the case, if the OCP was in fact allowed to make some use of material generated by Mr. Steve Hedder, and I'm not saying conclusively they have, I will get back to you, but if that is the case, then I will strenuously object to, to my treatment today in court. And I will get back to you on that. And Mr. Nuccia, nothing from our clients uh, is confirmed. No comments. Thank you. The President, the trial chamber uh, will not consider uh, your assumption, and we indicate that uh, we will give you an opportunity at any time to present the document before the trial chamber. And the chamber uh, does not pr prohibit you uh, from doing so because the two expert witnesses uh, will be summoned to testify in the proceeding in uh, the future, especially in case 002-01. Thank you. If you would perhaps consult page 16 of the draft trial transcript from 10 October, you may find an answer there. Thank you very much. The trial chamber, uh, the president, Jet Katrai, you may proceed. Thank you, President. Uh, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, there has been a reference, uh, an, an oblique reference to a document uh, involving the potential witness, Steve Hedder. Uh, do you know to what document? that reference was, and if so, could you give it to the trial chamber, the reference now to the trial chamber so that it can consider this matter over the lunch adjournment? Your Honour, can I say that I'm actually at the um, draft transcripts at the moment for that date, the 16th of October. Um, I'll just be checking that page reference to page 16, and can I revert back to you as soon as I've got that uh, document, please? Yes, I, I, that would be helpful. Thank you. I've got a bit more information. I, I believe it's documents E3-27. It's, it's all right. Thank you. The prosecutor will inform us. Thank, thank you, you very much thank for you. being so very extendedly helpful. Well, and the President. Next, I 
now hand over to the defense team for uh, Mr. Yang Sari to uh, put the documents before uh, the chamber in relation to the uh, administrative structure of the Democratic Cambodia. You may proceed. Council Angadam. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. And good morning to everyone. The defense team uh, for Mr. Ying Sari does not have any particular uh, document to put before the chamber, but we have a few observations to make at this stage of the proceeding. I am wondering whether or not uh, I will be granted leave uh, to make this observation now or any time during the proceedings. Please advise. The President, you may proceed. You may make any observation in response uh, to the document presented uh, by other parties uh, before the chamber. And you have to be uh, specific uh, when you make uh, such uh, an observation. Particularly, you have to make mention as clearly as possible the document numbers uh, and references. Uh, you are not allowed to uh, make a general observation. Council Angadam. Thank you, Mr. President, for uh, the advice. Uh, I still have some uh, issue which I need uh, clarification. I actually uh, need the clarification from the uh, prosecution, and I listen uh, to his clarification. And uh, following the uh, explanation, clarification by the uh, prosecution, I do not have any uh, comment. The President, how about the defense team for Mr. Kiel Sampon? Do you have any uh, thing to say, uh, particularly if you have any uh, documents you want to put before the chamber? If you do, uh, please proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. In fact, I want to place myself in the shoes of the members of the public here present who must be wondering what is happening, what we are talking about. The problem, as far as Mr. Kyo Sampan's defense is concerned, is that for the past two days, we have been expelled from the proceedings. In fact, Mr. President, what we have before us over the past two days has been a press conference, and that is why the defense for Kyo Sampan refuses to participate in this press conference. We were informed by an announcement before these two days of hearings that the proceedings will not focus on the admissibility of documents that will be presented by the parties, and even less so on the appropriate value. That is what we were told, and this is how the previous hearing unfolded. A while ago, Mr. President, you stated that parties could react to documents. Perhaps my learned friend would like to make a submission, but I haven't completed my submissions, Mr. President. May I be allowed to do so? Mr. President, you pointed out a while ago that we could react to the documents. But the problem we face is that we could not react um, in a split second to dozens and dozens of documents presented by the parties in what we consider as a press conference. And uh, we were told previously that we would not be allowed to react, and we were also told in advance that we would not have to discuss the admissibility of documents or their probative value. That said, 
And in that regard, even though a few minutes ago, Mr. President, and this is how we understood your uh, statement, you amended the rules governing these hearings. We were not prepared for that, and so we were not expecting to be asked to react to documents presented by the parties. You must have observed, by the way, that over the past two days of hearings, the only reactions that came from our side were purely technical when the prosecutor used general terms to describe uh, documents that uh, they used, whereas the terms of those documents were more specific. Now, the defense for Kyo Sampan does not intend to participate any further in such a press conference because we are not in a, a trial. We are in a, a process in which the rights of the accused are not respected, and so we do not intend to participate therein. The President, the national lead co lawyer for the civil party, you may proceed. Counsel Peyang. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors and everyone. I am afraid that my intervention now might be belated. The President, well, since it is belated, it is not appropriate, then you do not have to proceed. But look at him. You uh, are not uh, granted uh, the floor uh, to make uh, this observation. And International Council for uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia, you are not uh, granted permission uh, to uh, make this observation because the matter has already been dealt with. How about the National Lead Co Lawyer for the Civil Party? Floor. Uh, your time was uh, up, uh, so um, the uh, parties have already exchanged uh, their observations already, so uh, you are not granted the floor uh, to discuss this uh, matter uh, anymore because we uh, allotted uh, the time for you, so you have already finished uh, your part uh, in uh, putting the document before the chamber. I now give the floor to the national lead co lawyer for the civil party. You may proceed. Now, the national lead co lawyer for the civil party, and he mentioned that uh, he was, uh, it was uh, rather late for him to make uh, this uh, submission, and I mentioned that if it was too late, uh, then he need not make any observation. But if he had anything to say, you may proceed. Counsel Peng even if uh, it it is belated, but uh, it is very crucial for uh, members of the uh, public uh, at large. Uh, the purpose of the last two days' hearing is that, uh, first, uh, we want to put the documents before the chambers, and those documents are evidentiary documents which, uh, which are very uh, important. Um, they contain uh, substantive information uh, for uh, members of the public and in the future, uh, they may become in the public domain. So we will have to uh, make it clear. We uh, cannot say that uh, the last two days hearing is not of use. And I would also like to respond to the uh, observation made by the defense team for Mr. Ian Sari. Um, he were, of course, granted leave by the chamber to make specific uh, comments uh, on certain documents presented by other parties. And Mr. Vak Kang uh, mentioned that uh, the observation uh, had to be in a general nature simply because there were dozens and dozens of documents and he could not dwell on this, uh, any particular topic, and it, he um, uh, mounted uh, the last two days uh, hearing 
uh, was a mere press conference. I did not actually intend to interrupt, but I simply uh, find that the uh, intervention by Mr. Vakang uh, was not appropriate. The President, is there any issue for the International Defense Council for Mr. Nunjia? Thank you, Mr. President. I, I apologize for uh, speaking without my microphone, that I was just trying to make the point that my colleague, uh, Mr. Vakang, raised a new issue, and that issue was whether or not parties would be able to object to the documents. And I completely agree. This morning is the very first time anyone on this stage heard that from you, Mr. President. It was never communicated to the parties. Had it been communicated to the parties, obviously, obviously, all of us on this side of the stage would have made objections, would have made substantive comments, would have responded, reacted, done something uh, in response to what happened. What was communicated to us was a document presentation. And I think my friend's use of the word press conference is quite accurate. It was simply to show documents without comment, without debate. That was what we were told. So for you, Mr. President, to tell us this morning, again, at a very late hour, that all of a sudden it's an adversarial hearing, uh, I find it remarkable, remarkable. You are a remarkable presiding judge, truly. The President, I hand over to Judge uh, Silver Cartwright. Uh, you may proceed, Your Honor. Yes, thank you, President. Uh, the Chamber is uh, 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 going to deliberate on the recent uh, comments made by Counsel for Nguyen Chia and give its, uh, its uh, response after the lunch adjournment. In the meantime, Mr. Prosecutor, do you have the reference, please? Your Honour, on the 10th of October, the prosecutors placed before the court two English summaries of revolutionary flags. They made it plain when doing so, they made it plain when doing so that these were English summaries that the prosecution thought had been prepared either by Stephen Hedder or Professor Ben Kiernan. 
So those were the references to Mr. Header that day. The document numbers for those two issues of revolutionary flag are E3-724 and E3-731. Can I say that whilst we're dealing with uh, Stephen Header and Your Honour's earlier ruling in relation to documents authored by Stephen Header for the purposes of the document presentation hearing, there's an obvious difference between a record of an interview taken down by Mr. Header and a document such as a revolutionary flag, which we believe the summary of which came from uh, Stephen Header. Can I say whilst on my feet, please, um, Your Honour, that the prosecution would have had comments to make about Mr. Verkin's summary of this uh, hearing. A document hearing is putting evidence before a court. It's not a press conference, and he might well um, dwell upon a particular moment from a previous very famous international court trial when an English judge called Richard May was dealing with the former president of Serbia, uh, Mr. Milosevic, and made it absolutely plain that the purpose of counsel in these trials is not to use an English phrase, to showboat. The purpose of this document hearing was to put admissible, relevant documents before the trial chamber that Your Honours had not seen before. I find it sad that Defence Counsel feel, in response to that legitimate legal exercise, the need to showboat and preen their feathers. Perhaps it's time for Defence Counsel to put their peacock feathers in and for us all to concentrate on the evidence. I say a very brief word without engaging in any polemics, Mr. President. Sans faire de polémique. Without engaging in any controversies, I would like to respond to the last statement by the prosecutor. And I would like to assert here that the chamber, or Mrs. Lamb, who represents the chamber, told us during our consultations prior to the hearings, we were told that the documents presentation hearing neither had to do with the submission of documents nor the discussion of the property value of those documents. We were told that the documents presentation hearing was aimed at enabling the public to take stock of the documents, most of which already have uh, reference numbers, uh, which you are aware of, Mr. President. The purpose of this hearing was to enable the Cambodian public to better understand the documents used before the chamber today in, uh, in, in a very oblivious manner my learned friend of the civil parties said, that is not at all the case. In fact, what has occurred before the public over the past two days has been proceedings, uh, judicial proceedings. May I, uh, I, I and I have uh, adhered to what the senior legal officer announced, and we're not talking of proceedings or adversarial debates insofar as we are not discussing the validation of documents um, with E3 reference numbers, nor the property value of those documents. In that regard, I think the discussion was closed. Um, unless you clarify the matter, Mr. President, and put an end to any further misunderstandings. The President, uh, Council Angodam, you may proceed. You have already heard the comment made by the prosecution, Council Angodam. Mr. President, I know that uh, the hearing that have been conducted since the 10th uh, of uh, 
October, was, according to the letter by the senior legal officer, not uh, the uh, hearing uh, about uh, the possibility of rejection or admission of certain uh, documents. It was a mere document, to, uh, a mere hearing to listen to the uh, various uh, documents to be put before the chamber, the documents that have not uh, been put before uh, the uh, witnesses who have come to testify in this court before. And just now, the president made it clear that uh, for the uh, documents uh, written by two experts, uh, Mr. Philip Short and Mr. Stephen Hedder, uh, should not now be appropriate to put uh, before the chamber since the chamber has not yet determined whether or not these two experts are to be called uh, to testify before this court. That is the first thing. But my question was that on the 10th of October, the uh, prosecution uh, put a document written by Mr. St Stephen Hedder. Uh, that was the interview with Mr. Ying Sari, and he read out a portion of this uh, interview with Mr. Ying Sari out in the open court. I was wondering why he was allowed to do that, and I don't know whether or not there was an opportunity for us uh, to object such a, a document and reading. And just now, uh, the prosecution also made it uh, clear in the court uh, that they refer only to the uh, revolutionary flags, but to me, it was not confined to the revolutionary flags. There were statements and interviews written uh, by the two experts as well. And you also mentioned that uh, those documents were accorded uh, the E3 classification. So my question is, uh, when the uh, lead co-lawyer for the civil party, particularly the international uh, lead co-lawyer who mentioned uh, certain documents that were not accorded uh, the E3 uh, classification yet, but those documents were allowed to read in open court, and I was wondering why uh, there was such a, a controversy in the uh, presentation of the document. I do need the clarification from the chamber, and if my understanding is incorrect, uh, please uh, advise me. I don't know whether or not the documents that are uh, being put before the chambers are not subject to um, a rejection. I would like to know whether or not uh, the hearing here is all about the presentation of the documents and parties are not allowed uh, to object against uh, the uh, uh, presentation of the documents. And I wonder why certain documents are allowed uh, to read out and others are not, the president. The chamber has made it uh, clear already in relation to the two documents, and Judge Zong Mark Lavenge also clarified the issue. And as for uh, the uh, document in relation to the application to join as a civil party, the chamber has uh, uh, admitted and it was subject to adversarial uh, hearing as well. And you may have already been well aware that there have been more than 4,000 applicants to join as the civil parties. And uh, we have uh, classified uh, certain documents with the three cli uh, E3 classification. And as for the annexes uh, to those documents may be used in certain uh, cases, particularly uh, the document relating to the application to join as the civil parties. And I divide it into precise two uh, points, one uh, relating to the uh, experts uh, and the other relating to the documents that uh, parties are supposed uh, to put uh, before the chamber. And uh, parties are allowed uh, to put this document at a pro appropriate time in the proceeding. Uh, that is meant to facilitate the flow of the hearing. And on a separate issue, party ask uh, us. Uh, and if they wish uh, to 
um, make observation uh, on certain document presented, uh, they can do so, but they are not going to uh, discuss the probative value and weight uh, of uh, those uh, documents. The uh, parties were not uh, supposed uh, to assess the probative value or weight uh, of the evidence because this is not at the closing stage uh, of the proceedings. The President, Council, you may proceed. Council Angadam. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like uh, to uh, clarify the title of the document uh, that the prosecution uh, put before the chamber uh, in relation to the interview by Mr. Steve Hatter. It's document E3-89. And just now I heard from the uh, President very clearly, but I have to uh, double check uh, with that. Uh, this is the hearing uh, to present uh, documents. It is not the hearing to uh, admit or reject any documents. And if uh, you do not mind, please uh, clarify this. The President, it is true. We have not rejected any document presented by the parties. But the chamber asked us to uh, defer two documents, the documents relating to the witness uh, who may be uh, subject to be summoned by the uh, chamber. Uh, we have to take into consideration the circumstances involved uh, when the uh, summoning of those um, uh, two experts. And Mr. Uh, Philip Short has already been uh, summoned, uh, but due to his busy schedule, uh, we defer uh, his testimony to early 2013. And as for the other experts, uh, we have advised the parties that uh, he is under the consideration by the chamber whether or not to summon him uh, to testify. Uh, and uh, Judge Zong Mark Lavenge has already uh, clarified that uh, very precisely, and uh, he also uh, asked the parties uh, to uh, proffer the chamber with uh, documents as well at appropriate times uh, when we uh, hear, we may hear this uh, testimony sometime in 2013. The President, uh, the uh, Mr. Prosecutor, do you have any issue to raise. Otherwise, the time is also appropriate now for a break. No, thank you, Mr. President. The President. Council, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just two points today uh, before we sit down. Uh, I, I take Mr. Rayner's point that there's a difference between an article authored by an expert and an interview conducted by an expert. The point I was trying to make, the point I was trying to make is that we would have all done well to have been notified in advance of the parameters. And the difference that I, that I accept, uh, it's not a fatal difference. There, there are still potential issues with uh, an interview conducted by a person who is not an OCIJ investigator, if that is in fact the rationale for not hearing or for not discussing a report prepared by an expert. If the rationale for not discussing the report prepared by an expert is that he's not here, then that same rationale should apply to interviews conducted by that expert who is not a judicial officer at the time of conducting interviews. I hope I'm making myself clear. I do take Mr. Rayner's point, but it was not the point that I was trying to make. It was not the point that I was trying to make. If we're to be prohibited from discussing documents, we should be told that in advance and we should be given reasons as to why we're prohibited so we understand it, so it's clear for the record, so we can make appropriate motions and or appeals. That's my complaint. That is my complaint. And of course, my final application for the morning is that Mr. Nunchia be permitted to spend the afternoon in the holding cell. He's suffering from a headache, a backache, and a general lack of concentration. I may do well to retire to the holding cell myself. Uh, enjoy your lunch, everyone.
The President, the time is now appropriate for lunch uh, break. The Chamber will adjourn now until 1.30 uh, this afternoon. This afternoon, the Chamber will hear the testimony of one civil party. And the Chamber notes the request by Mr. Nguyen Chia through his defense uh, counsel uh, to follow the proceeding uh, remotely through audiovisual means for the remainder of today's proceedings. Due to his uh, health concern, the Chamber grants the request of Mr. Nguyen Chia. Uh, he may follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs through audiovisual means for the remainder of today's proceedings. Mr. Nunji has expressly waived his right not to be present directly in this uh, courtroom. The chamber requires that the defense team for Mr. Nunji to submit uh, to the chamber uh, immediately the waiver with the thumbprint or signature of the accused Nunji. Uh, AV booths are instructed to link uh, the audio visual mean to the holding cell downstairs where Mr. Nunji can follow the proceeding remotely. Uh, uh, for the remainder of today's proceedings. Security guards are instructed to bring the co-accused, Mr. Nunji and Mr. Kilson Pond, to the holding cell downstairs. Mr. Nunji is to remain in the holding cell uh, for the remainder of today's proceedings, and Mr. Kilson Pond is to be brought uh, to this courtroom before 1.30 this afternoon. The court is now adjourned.